Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. A pretty sad story tonight. One person is dead. The alleged killer may soon be roaming the streets free. Why is that? Well, because leaders of the Democratic Party are starting to believe, internalize the belief, act on the belief that illegal aliens have more rights than American citizens. Look at this picture. This is Ivan Zamaripa Castaneda. Look closely. That is, in fact, an Ace of Hearts tattoo on his face. But that's not the problem with this man. The problem is twofold. First, he's an illegal alien. Second, over the weekend in Denver, police say he got drunk and slammed his car into a semi-truck. The truck burst into flames. The driver was burned to death. Rather than stay at the scene, Zamaripa Castaneda fled the scene. He was later arrested. Now he faces charges of vehicular homicide. And then politics got involved, which is why we're bringing this to your attention tonight. Federal authorities have asked Denver to detain this man so he can be arrested on federal charges and deported back to Mexico, where he's from and should be living. But no, they can't. Why? Because Denver is a sanctuary city, and that means that Democratic politicians there are committed to protecting the accused killer, even if it means he'll soon be loose in downtown Denver, and he may be. As soon as he posts a $25,000 bond, he will be free to go until his next court date. That's assuming he bothers to show up in court. And by the way, why would he? He snuck into this country. He's going to go to court. Probably not. When Democrats say they're committed to protecting undocumented immigrants, this is who they're talking about. They believe illegal aliens accused of murder deserve to be protected from you more than you deserve to be protected from them. They care more about Ivan Zamaripa Castaneda than they care about you. They'll ignore and undermine federal law on his behalf. Would they do that for you? I don't think so. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has filed suit to stop insanity like this. The Department of Justice has sued the state of California. It's a sanctuary state that has explicitly announced it will punish citizens there for cooperating with the federal government in the pursuit of enforcing immigration law. Democrats in California are outraged by what the Attorney General has done. They're calling him the real criminal. Watch. What Jeff Sessions said is simply not true. And I call upon him, upon him to apologize to the people of California, to bringing the mendacity of Washington to California and trying to insert discord and division. How dare you vilify members of our community by trying to frighten the American public into thinking that all undocumented residents are dangerous criminals? How dare you? This is how the left has begun to think. If you believe accused murderers who shouldn't be in this country ought to go back to their own countries, you're the one who's out of line. If you believe in borders, you're a monster. This isn't your country. It belongs to other people now. That's the message they're sending explicitly. The Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, joins us right now. Mr. Attorney General, thanks for coming on. Thank you. So um, this is, I think it's fair to say, an emergency if a city government is making it possible for an accused killer to go free simply because they're morally opposed to federal immigration law. That's setting up a conflict between the state and the federal government. Where, how can this be stopped? What's the next step here? The American people have got to speak first and foremost to these governmental leaders. Uh, it's just unacceptable to take this case in Denver that you just cited, where uh, the individual will be released from jail. Our ICE officers are not going to stop looking for him. They're going to go out to find him. They'll be at greater risk. They'll place people in the community at greater risk to try to make an arrest there when they could have been safely picked up in the custody from the custody of the Denver authorities. So this situation is very, very serious, and it represents a commitment from the hard left, these activist groups, to open borders and non-legal enforcement of immigration. Cannot be the policy of the United States of America. So some Democratic politicians say the states are not, and I think they're legally correct, are not obligated to carry out federal law. But then others, including the mayor of Oakland, have gone farther and actively tried to subvert federal law, as Mayor Libby Schaff of Oakland did the other day by warning people that federal agents were coming. Does that constitute obstruction of justice, and should she be prosecuted for that? We're looking at that. Our fabulous uh, ICE officers and Tom Holman are keeping us posted on what's really happening there. Those kind of things depend on the law and the facts, and we'll evaluate them at the Department of Justice. But yes, this is a radical ideology. It's contrary to the American law. The supreme law of the land is American uh, immigration law, and it must be enforced, else we'll just have open borders, and that cannot be. 
Well, we're getting, oh, we have open borders in effect in a lot of ways. Now we're getting something that looks like insurrection almost. The biggest state saying we're going to actively work to undermine basic federal law. Do you worry that the country won't hang together? I don't think so. I think this is an extreme act. When I was in California, I heard countless people tell me they were embarrassed and outraged about what was going on. I think these people have just been able to get away with it and not been challenged not been challenged uh, uh, intellectually as to the meaning of what they're doing, how radical it is, how unacceptable it is, how it places the lives of American police officers and ICE officers at greater risk, as well as our communities at greater risk, because we keep criminals in the country that are due to be deported. Do, do you see how if you're looking on as, a, as an observer of this, it does seem like the federal government is toothless in the face of this challenge. Elected officials stand up, give the finger to federal immigration authorities, to law enforcement. With impunity, it does seem like they, the mayor of Oakland, has more power than the, than the feds. Well, Tucker, whether we want to use every lawful tool we have to push back against this activity. You can be sure of that. I will say, however, that ultimately in this country, the American people have the final word. And they have got to analyze what their leaders are doing. And if they're pro uh, promoting these kind of un unlawful, uh, unwise, and dangerous policies, they need to be held to account. And when the political needle starts moving, I think you'll see politicians start changing. The Attorney General you replaced, uh, one Attorney General before uh, that, Eric Holder, um, has endorsed this. Do you think it's odd that a former chief law enforcement officer in the country would be endorsing ignoring federal law? Well, he's being hired by the state, being paid a legal fee uh, to represent the state of California, but I totally believe that uh, this policy that they're defending in California is unwise and many places clearly illegal, and we're going to challenge its legality, and we're going to challenge its wisdom, and we're going to defend federal law officers and state law officers who are out there trying to do their duty every day and are being placed at much greater risk because uh, they won't even let the police talk to the federal officers who are the only ones that can actually deport a criminal alien. So just to switch gears, I think a lot of people, certainly I think a lot of our viewers have lost confidence in law enforcement and intelligence gathering agencies in this country because they think they've been used for political purposes to spy on Americans without real cause. and. Carter Page, I think, would be at the top of that list. Don't you think it would go a long way to restoring public confidence in those agencies if the rest of us had some sense of the basis upon which the FISA warrants were gotten for spying on Carter Page? It is our responsibility, and I think my responsibility, to ensure that the FISA process is carried out professionally, properly, lawfully, and with integrity. I intend to do that. We are working on that now. Our Office of Inspector General has almost 500 employees, investigators, and prosecutors, and they're going to work on this and get to the bottom of it. But could we, we see, I mean, because there's so much lying about this, from partisan lying, maybe from both sides, I know from one, about why the court granted the government the right to spy on this American citizen. Wouldn't it just dispel all the myths and the conspiracies if we could see, redacted of course, but if we could see the basis for it? Well, we've never uh, produced publicly the FISA warrants, but I have to tell you, Tucker, we've produced more documents, in this case, more uh, 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 information to the Congress and to the public than I think any uh, uh, Attorney yep. General's office in history has. We're going to go as far as we can go to make things public, and we're going to ensure So you don't think we need a special prosecutor to look into this? Well, we're going to get to the bottom of it. It, uh, it could be one day that a special prosecutor be, would be required, but we're going to look at this both with attorneys and uh, right. within the uh, inspector general's office, so and they will get to the bottom. So you're giving a speech tomorrow essentially about the rule of law, I think. Uh, I read a copy of it to the Federalist Society, and it raised a question in my mind about judges. Shouldn't the Congress act as a as a counterbalance against judicial overreach. If there's a judge who is clearly not even consulting the Constitution and making law, why wouldn't the Congress 
try to balance that out. You know, it's gotten to the point where Congress, I think, has been uh, too willing to cede its powers. Uh, I felt that when I was a member of the Congress. I feel it even more so now as the Attorney General. When I'm finding single judges, one out of 600, issue an executive order, an injunction, uh, a, a court injunction against executive orders of the executive branch of the United States without a, a foundation for that. Uh, uh, you could have 10 other judges who oppose it, but the one who enjoins it, their opinion is upheld. It may take 18 months to get the exactly. matter to the Supreme Court. Uh, it is disrupting the ability of this government to function, and I'm really concerned about it. It's time for the, the nation to reconsider these injunctions. Yeah. I mean, that's not democracy. That's a monarchy or something. Mr. Attorney General, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. I appreciate it. Well, Rays is an attorney and a columnist. He joins us tonight. Well, Good thanks evening. for coming on. So uh, we My normally pleasure. speak in area generalizations. Let's talk specifics quickly about what's going on in Denver right now. Sure. An illegal alien has been charged with vehicular homicide. The feds say he's broken federal immigration law. Mm -hmm. We want to take custody of him. And for ideological reasons, the city is saying, no, if he posts 25 grand bail, he's going to walk free. Hard to see how anybody could support something like that. I, why wouldn't we deport someone who's been credibly accused of murder? Well, right, exactly. He should be once he's, he's tried and convicted. But the problem here is that ICE did not issue a warrant for this individual. What they did was they issued a detainer. And ICE, on, in Colorado, they issue, per their statement, they issue between 35,000 and 40,000 detainers a day. They say they don't have the time to go through the paperwork to fill out the, the additional request that is involved with a warrant. And because they did not do that, this individual was allowed to be released from custody. That's oh, the problem. Okay, and that so, makes so, the case, right, in a sense, for having immigration priorities. Oh, okay. So I guess if someone's accused of homicide, that would put him right at the top of the priority list. And Absolutely. yet ideologues like the people in charge in Denver are basically saying his rights are more important than those of American citizens who live in Denver who are going to be exposed to this guy when he walks out of jail after posting $25,000 bail. No, so where what, are their what, rights? Who's looking, looking out for looking their at, rights? I, I think our Constitution is looking out for their rights. And the fact is, all people, including the undocumented, do have certain rights under our Constitution. The reason that the, the law enforcement uh, authorities in Denver did not detain this individual, because there are court rulings in the Supreme Court and the lower courts, most specifically, I think recently, the Mendoza case, that says these local jurisdictions will be at, at risk of uh, liability for Double uh, jeopardy that, you know if what? they that's hold not, someone that's for a not, second look, so, time. So, so let me, let me so just say, so, so are you actually on the warrants? They do yeah, not honor right. detainers. They, you know, that's very, it's, as we both know, and I just want our audience to know that what you're saying is disingenuous. It has nothing to do with their fealty to Supreme Court decisions. Those are a joke to the left, as you know. Are you actually arguing that the federal government has no right to take someone into custody when they know for a fact that he is breaking federal immigration law. He's not supposed to be here. He's an illegal alien, and they don't right. have a right to the detain him. The federal government has the right to take people into custody, provided they follow the proper procedure prescribed by the statute. And the statute in this instance requires that they fill out the forms for a warrant, which should be either issued by a judge or a criminal warrant, which can be sworn out. They did not do that. They only issued the detainer, and that's why he was released. Yeah. This has been, you're wrong, let me just say that, this has been going on for That's a long time in precisely the way that I described has now been thwarted by politically ambitious politicians who want votes, as you know. But let me just step but three steps back and ask you. But this actually based on court rulings, not ideology right. of politicians. Yeah. Oh, it's based yeah. on that's, court rulings that these not, local that, law that, enforcement that's a, that's officials are following because you, does, they don't want the financial liability. Does it bother you that a guy credibly accused of homicide is going to walk out when he shouldn't have been here it does. in the first place. Sure. Okay. But it I does also, bother. I also trust that local law enforcement that they are following the processes prescribed by law. In this case, the Denver police, and they are doing. They do not want to face lawsuits from these Real, different oh, individuals. Lawsuits. Okay. So they how don't about want doing the right thing? So if advocacy it, groups, if and it, most importantly, whatever. they don't want to be sued by by other authorities by for people not like complying you. with federal law. So let law. me let me let me say this. Why wouldn't the Denver Sheriff's Department? call ICE and say, by the way, he's getting out now, he's walking out the front door, grab him, which right. they're allowed to do. They are allowed to do that, but they do not do it because ICE oh. did not issue a warrant. No, they no, no, only they don't need to. Wait, hold on, slow down. ICE does not, oh, slow down, the that's difference. not true. No, there's no difference. ICE does not need a warrant to pick that guy up off the street. Sorry, you're wrong. 
So why no, wouldn't the Denver... We're talking about two separate different things. You are but correct. Why, ICE but does not on. need a warrant to pick I, someone I know else. I'm they correct. do not. I know I'm correct. Right. So that's but why I'm ICE asking you a very simple question. the warrant when they're getting the local law enforcement if to you hold really someone cared, beyond, beyond the prescribed term. Okay. In this case, if you that's the exact circumstances. Let me just ask one last question, then sure. I'll let you go. If you really cared about the safety of American citizens in Denver, which the left is demonstrably doesn't care about, but let's say you just did for the sake of argument. Let's say you were continuing to pretend you cared. Why Thank wouldn't you. you, if you're the Denver Sheriff's Office, the second call him and say, you know, this guy's leaving at this hour, be waiting for him? Why wouldn't they do that? What's the answer? They're not going to get sued for that. Because as ICE itself has said, they are issuing on a, on a daily basis, a weekly basis, between 35 and 40,000 of these no, detainers. No, I'm not these talking about 35. I'm talking about this guy, the, the guy, the guy charged so. with homicide. Why wouldn't they do it in this specific case? Will because Denver do that? Be, Why wouldn't they? The reason they did not was because, again, ICE did not make him my priority by failing to get the warrant for it. Because they did not get the they warrant, don't need a warrant, the local no. law enforcement they did not need take it seriously. They don't need a warrant to protect the okay. local You're, law now enforcement being does need a warrant in no, order no. to hold you. Know what they need? That's based they, on the Mendoza case and multiple local uh, legal no, no. rulings. I, I just explained how they could do it. They're not doing it because they don't care. That's the truth, and you know it. Roll, thank you. Thank you, sir.